Hi everyone, in this video I am going to discuss briefly about the calorimetry and the cement hydration, basically the cement, typical cement hydration curve. So before we go ahead, let's uh, first get to see what uh, is cement hydration and what uh, chemical products are formed and what chemical reaction occurs. So these are three are different cement compounds that is uh, present in cement. Um, silicates, aluminates and sulfates. Uh, you can note, note down these symbols. Silicates is usually represented by S, aluminates by A and sulfate by S bar. So you can note down this the difference between silicate and sulfate symbols. There are two types of silicates present, uh, elite and belite. So it's tricalcium silicate and dicalcium silicate. Um, then there are two types of aluminates as well. Um, tricalcium aluminate and uh, um, ferrite, which is tetracalcium aluminoferrite. Sulfate um, usually is present in the form of gypsum, which is added to regulate the set time of cement. Uh, and uh, gypsum has two molecules of water, that's why it's called uh, dihydrate. Sometimes it is also present in form of plaster or uh, called hemihydrate and anhydrite. Now when uh, we add cement to, uh, to water, uh, there is a reaction which is called hydration reaction and this reaction is exothermic. So a uh, high amount of heat is generated during that reaction and that's why it's called exothermic. Along with that, um, four different types of hydration products are formed at different stages of the reaction. Uh, let's see what are these four hydration products. So the first one is calcium silicate hydrate, um, which has a fiber-like structure. And it's the most important one, which gives strength um, to cement or concrete. The next one is called calcium hydroxide, uh, also called as Portlandite sometimes. Um, and it has a uh, like crystalline structure. Then uh, there is ettringite, which is called calcium aluminate sulfate and hydrate. So uh, note down um, there, it's S bar, so it is sulfate, it's not silicate here. And then uh, there's monosulfate, uh, which has the same uh, formula, um, but mostly um, the ettringite is initially formed, which gets converted to monosulfate. Then as we saw that hydration reaction is exothermic and a high amount of heat is generated during that reaction. So we need to measure that heat. And for that measurement, calorimetry is uh, the commonly used method in other uh, fields of engineering. It is also used uh, for cement reaction. It is the most commonly used. Calorimetry basically measures the rate of heat of the hydration reaction. And uh, for that, as we know that the temperature affects the hydration reaction. So that heat, that which is released is actually measured at a constant temperature using isothermal calorimetry. So uh, isothermal here means that it is measured at a constant temperature. This is a typical uh, cement hydration curve uh, which is measured at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Here on x-axis uh, the it's the, the time and on y-axis we have the rate of heat in uh, milliwatts per gram. So this rate of heat is always normalized per gram of cement or cementitious material. Sometimes supplementary cementitious material are added to cement. So it's always normalized per gram of cement. Now this, uh, you, you can notice that it has three peaks. Now this one is the first peak, two, second peak and third peak. And also this uh, curve has five different stages so let's get to see what are these five different stages and then we'll discuss about the peaks as well so uh, this is the first stage which is called mixing stage uh, what we'll see what physical and chemical changes occur during all five stages so uh, during the first stage as soon as the cement is mixed with water the aluminates the aluminates which is very reactive uh, it reacts very fast with cement and uh, it, it reacts very fast with water and it starts to dissolve due to which a uh, high amount of heat is generated and uh, that's why this peak is observed. 
At the same time, this reaction of aluminate with water also consumes sulfate and uh, CASH is formed which is called the ettringite. Now the ettringite is a gel-like material and uh, what it does is it, it builds up around the cement grains which are unreacted. So due to which um, this CASH gel, the ettringite gel, limits the access of water to the grains and therefore it controls the rate of eliminate reaction. Now since water is not available to grains due to the gel, then not much reaction occur um, and uh, that's why you see this decline in the heat up until here. Then the next stage is called dormant stage um, during which, uh, which actually lasts for about two to four hours and during which not much reaction occur. Um, the reason for that is, as we discussed earlier, because of the formation of uh, ettringite, uh, the, it covers the cement grains. And that's why uh, not much reaction occurred during this period and uh, little physical change also occurred in that period. The concrete uh, or the cement paste in this period remains in plastic stage and that's why it gives a time to work with it. Um, the other uh, uh, chemical change that occur during this period is that the silicates, uh, which is the C3S and C2S, it slowly starts dissolving, not C2S not much, mostly it's C3S that dissolves and due to which the calcium ions and hydroxyl ions starts accumulating in solution. Uh, that occurs usually at the end of uh, the dormant period, um, which is called the initial setting. So during um, at the end of dormant period, it starts um, slowly starts setting. Then the next stage is called the hardening stage, right from initial setting till final setting, which lasts up to about eight to ten hours. So, what chemical changes occur during that hardening stage? And this is the most important stage of uh, hydration. During this period, uh, when the solution becomes super saturated with the calcium ions. Uh, as we discussed earlier that calcium ions are formed due to dissolution of C3S. Um, so when the solution is super saturated with calcium ions, then CSH, calcium silicate hydrate, and CH, calcium hydroxide is formed, which has a crystalline structure and CSH has a fiber-like structure. So that is formed and due to formation of these two, a high amount of heat again is generated and the rate of heat increases. Now the formation of CSH, which has a fiber-like structure, it forms a mesh along with other, other uh, solids and that is what gives the mixture stiffness and it causes the setting of cement. Um, the end of uh, the hardening period marks uh, with the final setting uh, during which the concrete is actually hard enough to you can walk on it or you can um, it starts hardening and almost it has set by that time uh, also what happens after final setting that concrete starts slowly developing the tensile stresses uh, due to the temperature and drying effects and the stiffness of uh, the concrete mix increases. And then um, this is the C3S peak uh, during which the maximum heat occurs. And after that, uh, the next stage is called the cooling stage. Um, so uh, after final setting, the rate of C3S reaction actually starts uh, slowing down and the amount of heat generated peaks and it begins to actually drop. The reason for this is that, that the buildup of CSH and CH, it st starts interfering with the contact between the remaining water and any like undissolved cement grains. And what chemical, what physical changes occur during that, that period is concrete is actually gaining strength uh, the heat reduces but it actually uh, continues gaining strength because uh, the formation of CSH and CH uh, keeps on increasing. 
um, here we'll see that sometimes uh, this peak is observed sometimes it's not uh, it depends on uh, you know, the formation of monosulfate uh, which occurs um, because the sulfate which till now has continued to react um, with aluminate uh, and forming atringite. So if you have any aluminate here remaining in your solution, which might occur in if you have high uh, alumina cement, so if you have uh, aluminate remaining in your solution, then that reacts with atringite uh, to form monosulfate, um, due to which you'll see a little peak here sometimes. Then the last stage is, is the densification stage, which actually continues uh, developing strength for uh, quite um, like it can continue for years. Um, during this stage, as we saw that C2S, which has not much reacted till now because its reaction is, is slower than that of C3S. Then uh, during this time, if you have water available in your system, in the system of that uh, cement, then um, the C2S can react and it can produce extra CSH, which can actually give uh, more strength uh, to, to cement and to concrete. So uh, it depends uh, completely on the availability of water. So we can say that the initial um, strength to cement is given by C3S and uh, um, the final strength is given by the formation of CSH due to the reaction of C2S. So um, the strength actually keeps on developing for years, starting from 8 to 10 hours of, of uh, mixing, and it can continue uh, up till years as, as long as we have water available in the system. Thank you.